Hi, I'm Richard with Sewing Machine Tips and Tricks, and in this video, we're going to service a Brother XR9550 PRW, um, and as well as look for any possible problems that it may have. This is one of the Project Runaway machines, and it's a limited edition. Um, I do want to state that a lot of the newer Brother machines now all are all open very similarly. Uh, the older ones were quite a bit different, but most of the new ones, um, they're making very, very similar so far as opening them up anyways. Um, if you have any questions, put it down in the comments and I'll get to you as quick as possible. And with that, let's get this show on the road. All right, so here's the Brother XR9550 PRW. And as I stated, it is a Project Runaway Limited Edition. Um, as well, most of the newer Brother machines are all very similar when it comes to cleaning and opening them up. So let's get right into this. I'm going to show you a few key things about opening it up and then we're going to get started doing it. So on these machines, they, the, all the screws are almost identical. Okay. So you have a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, one here, 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 and here. Also, this screw pertains specifically to this front cover. When you take that screw out, this front cover will can be removed. Uh, some of them, some of the machines are kind of difficult to remove this, others are easier. When you do, there's going to be another screw right here, okay? Now, so far as the screws go, here's what you need to know. This is a very specific screw. It is a small and short screw, okay? All of the screws, um, and on, on, on some of the older machines, this is, uh, isn't true, but on most of the newer machines, it is. Um, all of the screws are plastic screws with the exception of this, and this is a metal screw. Now on some of the older machines, this is also a metal screw. I mean, is also a plastic screw. Um, this is a shorter screw also. Now this screw and this screw are almost identical. They are small and very long. The rest of these screws, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, are short fat screws okay so it's real easy to remember what what screws go where if you have any questions put it in the comments let me know um, when you're opening your machine up just make sure that you pay attention to it okay so <clears throat> first thing that we want to do is um, remove this holder and get it out of the way all right um, most of them are open on the back, so be careful not to lose all your stuff. Okay, just sit them, sit it in the back, out of the way. Next, we're going to remove the plate on this. Um, all the Brother machines nowadays have a very similar plate, so I'm going to raise the pressure foot, raise the needle bar. I'm going to take the, well, I want to take this needle out first. You always want to take this needle out um, in order to keep from hurting yourself. And although you want this fairly tight, don't over tighten this because you'll mess it up. Okay. Do not over tighten that screw. You can screw that up and then your machine's done for. All right. So now that we've got that done on brother and uh actually baby lock as well because brother owns baby lock now um these are very similar some of them have this little latch right here where my left finger is and i know you can't see it very well um i don't know if i can get the light there it's a latch right here and you can, if you have it, you can see it very well, all right? That latch, you just put your fingernail in and you pull down and you see how that came out. 
Now, if it doesn't have that latch, up here at the very top, it'll have a place for you to put your fingernail and just pull down. A lot of those you have to put your hand on the other side and help pull it. But if it has this latch, normally it just pulls down, okay? And then you can lift this up and remove it. Um, if you have any other attachments right here, you really need to remove them before you do this because it can be tough. Um, and it's just a little plastic cover. You can remove this plastic cover or not. It's up to you, okay? Now, with that gone, take your bobbin out. And you can take your bobbin case out, okay? So, uh, when you're working on this machine, if you're not taking it all apart, you can take your bobbin case out without removing this metal plate. Um, in this video, I am going to remove this metal plate. You don't necessarily have to. Uh, if it's really dirty, I do suggest that you do. And uh, they actually make a small tool for this. I don't have one. Or actually, you know what? I have one that will work better. <clears throat> this little small tool will work much better for opening up these machines than that screwdriver. All right, and removing your foot before you move this plate will also make it much easier to uh, get that plate off. Now, those are the only two flathead screws that you're gonna have on this machine. The rest of them are going to be uh, a Phillips head, okay? So, here we go. I will first remove this one on this end. Sometimes it can be difficult to get the screw in there where it goes. Okay. Now let's, uh, we'll go ahead and remove this. So this will pull up like this. Yeah, this one's a little more difficult. Some of them, like I said, some of them are more difficult than others. There we go. And what it is, is you've got this little piece right here holding down on it and you've got this little piece that slid in so you've got to get this up without breaking this so that's the difficult part of that um if you just have a little patience it will come apart now we're going to go ahead and remove this screw so that it is gone and once i get the rest of them out we can uh <clears throat> just open it up so you can see that one's a really short screw plastic now just starting up at the top go across all right and like i stated this is a machine screw for metal and i'm going to that will stick up there like that Put this in here this is a this is a really small hole here so if your screwdriver is too big it won't fit in there you can see what this screw looks like long and cylindrical but for plastic then we're, I'm going to move to this one maybe Okay. And you see, this is what most of the screws on this machine look like. They're short and fat, and they're made for plastic. And then we'll go to this one. Make sure you don't forget this screw right here. This one can be easy to forget, easy to miss. 
Uh, and if you try to force it, you'll definitely break it. I lost my screw. And again, you can see this is a long cylindrical screw made for plastic. And then all the rest of them will look alike. Um, just make sure that you get them all out. Of course, getting your screwdriver in these screws sometimes is a pain. <laughs> For whatever reason, it just doesn't want to go in the right place. If you keep moving it around, then it will go in. Oh, and um, I did forget some of these have a plate on the bottom that have to come off and some of them don't. Um, you'll have to look at yours and see if it does or not. So I think this one does. Look at this, yeah, it does. So uh, a lot of these have a plate on the bottom and there's four screws that need to be removed. And they're all short screws made to go into plastic, just like this. And you can remove this first or last or whatever, it doesn't matter which order you do it in. But yeah, as you can see, this thing's already opening up. <laughs> now, you've got all of these. I have not seen one that's any different to this point. Have two wires, two wires and two wires only that you need to pay attention to. And they're right here at the top. So you open this up. And I will tell you, some of them are longer than others. Some of them it's easy to get to, and some of them it's a real pain in the butt. Um, so you can see here, the, these are a little bit longer, which makes it nice for the video. Um, you can see those wires right there, right? Right there, they go here and here, okay? I want you to notice how they go around the one on the right, how it goes, and the one on the left, how it goes. Now, some of them, both of them will come over here, and this one will go on this side, and this one will go on this side. Whatever, doesn't matter, as so long as they are kept up out of the way of everything else, and how they're kind of guided through here, okay? Pay attention to all this, so that you can put it back exactly the same way. And I'm going to get these undone. Um, if you pull the wiring out of all of its harnesses first, it makes this process easier, okay? So this is what I'm talking about. If you get it out of all the little channel there, then you can just grab the wires And just grab the wires up near near the holder and just kind of pull up and move back and forth like that real gently and it'll come apart now you're good to pull that apart um each machine you know this is a very very clean machine very clean if you go to my website uh odessasewingmachine.com I've got a video on there and it starts out with a similar machine to this and I opened it up and there is just a solid block, solid block of lint, okay? Um, and you see that right away. That's a bad thing. Do not let your machine get that, get that way. Clean your machine often. 
you lint destroys these machines quickly okay that machine was destroyed and it was no good uh the main reason it was destroyed was because of up here the lint ate through the uh aluminum aluminum housing where the needle bar went so clean your machines if you don't clean your machines you are destroying your machine uh with lint so don't do that if you take care of these machines they will last if you don't they won't so um if you have any questions put it down in the comments so now at this point you've got this opened up you can use a brush and you can brush this out uh you can use air and you can blow it out whatever um when it comes to these you open a machine up like this using air the the lint needs to get out of the machine so it's most definitely going to get out of the machine um you're going to look at this you're going to make sure that everything looks good you're going to check your bobbin winder okay and the bobbin winder tire over here um i will show you i'll have a video here in the near future that's going to show you how to change this bobbin winder out it's not a difficult process, but um, it takes a little bit more work and uh, takes a few minutes to do. And you gotta really pay attention because you got some other stuff you gotta take apart, okay? Um, anyway, I'm looking at this and this machine doesn't even look like it's ever been used. So um, I'm turning it, everything seems to turn fine. Everything seems to operate fine. I don't see any problems. The belt looks good. I don't see any problems with the belt. Okay, I'm looking for cracks or other issues. Um, warning, warning. This right here, this is for your feed dogs. You're going to lubricate it a little bit, but you're not gonna put a ton of lubrication on it and you're not gonna move it, okay? Because if you get this out of whack, um, it is very difficult to get it back in place, in the right place, okay? So do not screw with this. Put a little bit of lubrication on it, and I do mean a little bit, and that's it, okay? Um, everything else on this machine looks good. As far as this one goes, like I said, it doesn't look like it's ever even been used. I don't see any indication of lint in this thing at all. So um, when there is, it, you want to make sure that you get it out. You especially want to make sure that you get all the lint out of this area. Lint will absolutely destroy this. Okay. So I'm going to lubricate it. So what we do is I lubricate the needle bar, uh, top and bottom where it goes through the frame. Anytime you lubricate a needle bar, that's what you're looking for. Uh, top and bottom where it goes through the frame. Then this is where the, uh, take up lever assembly, hooks to the needle bar. We most definitely want to get this lubricated uh, because as you can see, it turns back and forth and causes the needle bar to go up and down. Also, um, let me turn this down. You can see here how it moves back and forth when you're doing a zigzag, how it moves back and forth in the machine, right? So, I want that lubricated. I want all the whole linkage all the way up to the base. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot of lubrication, just a little bit, okay? So a couple of drops here, a couple of drops here. I'm gonna put a couple of drops here and I'm gonna put a couple of drops in the back. Then here on each side of this, on each side of this, and on each side of this. Now, before I lubricate anything else, I'm gonna turn it a few times. Okay, and I'm gonna put a couple more right here and here. I'm gonna turn it a few more times. If, you, if this already has lint in it, it is very vital that you do this several times because that oil will push the lint that gets stuck in here out. If you don't get that lint out, it will destroy that, okay? So it's vital to put a couple of drops, turn it, put a couple more drops, turn it, and that oil will push the lint out and then remove that lint. And unfortunately, I can't show you this in this video because there's no lint. So um, turn that, 
Now I'm going to, before I move on, I'm going to get the uh, presser bar and I'm going to put a couple of drops here and a couple of drops here. Okay, that's all that's needed on that. That's it. Okay, just make sure you get a couple of drops on each one, move it back and forth. Now, very, very important. Right here is a bushing. You have four bushings. You have one on the end of each shaft. Okay, so here, back here, this one's hard to get to. Here and here. These need to be lubricated and they need to be lubricated well. Um, sometimes your machine will start drying. Well, one of these will start drying up and it'll become hard to turn. I doubt that we're gonna see that here. It doesn't feel hard to turn. And you'll put a little bit of lubrication on it and you'll turn it and you'll see some black gunk start coming out. You need to continue to put a few drops on it and turn it and put a few more drops on it and turn it until all the gunk comes out of there, okay? That's, uh, that's dried varnish and dirt and stuff inside there that's hanging your machine up. You gotta get that out. Uh, you don't want to try to pull this whole thing apart to clean it. If you put, I, I use TriFlow. TriFlow is excellent for that because it it penetrates in there and it uh, cuts that, it, it, it cuts the crap and pushes it out. So um, regular sewing machine oil will do that, but it will take much, much, much longer. You may not be able to get it by doing this method. TriFlow absolutely will. Um, so, make sure that you get that out so i'm going to take and i'm going to put a little bit of oil here and a little bit of oil on each side of that bushing okay and i'm going to turn it a few times then i'm going to turn this up and i'm going to get this other bushing over here okay this is hard to see and i'm sorry i can't really get you in there to see it okay and i'm going to turn that you can get on the other side of it. You've got to look real close. But you can get on the other side of it. Okay, so that other bushing, just like this is at the end of the shaft, it is right here next to all this. You can see the screw. That screw right there holds that bushing in place. All right. You want to get the oil right next to it, just like I did on this one, okay? And turn it a few times. If you start getting gunk out of there, then the main place that you want to put the oil is on this end right next to it. Just like if I can do it. Just like that. And then turn it. Um, the easier way to do this is just to lay it on its back and do it. For this video, I'm not doing that, so you can kind of see, uh, because I can't hang my phone up very well. All right, now I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to I'm going to get these other two bushings. So you see this bushing quite well. This, you know, right next to the bushings is where we're trying to get this. So I'm going to put a little bit here, and I'm going to put a little bit here, okay, on each side of that bushing, and then I'm going to turn it see if I see anything nasty coming out of there. I don't. I'm going to do it a couple more times. Normally, this bushing right here is the one you'll have problems with because either this one or this one because these two are the ones that get the dirtiest. This one has an access port outside for crap to get in. This one will get hammered with lint and stuff. Okay, so those are the two that you will normally see. Um, this one down here will get hammered with lint, but for whatever reason, it doesn't normally, it doesn't normally get nasty, okay? And I'm gonna get on each side of the bushing. There's a retainer here. You wanna get between the bushing and that retainer, okay? It's just a small metal piece that goes right up against it, okay? And turn it. now. We got several other things that we want to do here. <coughs> um, so, right here, let me see if I can get you a better picture. OK, 
okay? Right here in your hook, this is your hook. In Singers and Janomis, they have a hole in the center of that, in, in the center of this little pin, okay? And it has, has an oil wick. Brother doesn't have that, but this still needs to be lubricated, okay? So what I will do is I will drop a little bit of oil in there. This other piece here, that round discolored piece, that is a magnet, and I just drop some oil in there and I turn it. Now, when you do this, uh, when the when there's when the machine's been used and had quite a bit of uh, use and stuff, there'll be lint here, and you'll start pushing that lint out. So just like up here, you'll push the lint out, and you're going to want to remove that. So take a rag or a small screwdriver or whatever. This just has a little bit of grease in there. That's all. The, that's the discolorization. If you can see it on the video. I'm not sure that you can see that discolorization inside there. <clears throat> That's just a little bit of grease that they put in there, okay? Uh, that magnet, if you need to get that out of your way, you can take a small flathead screwdriver or something, get up underneath that and lift it. It is, be very careful. It's not a metal magnet, it's a vinyl magnet or whatever they are, okay? It's made, what, what it's for is to, if you break a needle or whatever, it's made to grab that and keep it from going further down your machine. So if you break a needle, all right, you want to take your needle plate off and remove your bobbin case and see if it's underneath there and get it out, all right? So once you do that, then it makes it easier to clean that up. Um, I don't have anything to clean up there. Uh, maybe that little bit of grease i'll get that off there just use a rag and go around it a little bit like that okay and then put a little more oil on there Got a piece of something in there i don't know what it is okay A little bit more oil on that turn it make sure everything looks good don't have anything else coming out and then i don't want that heavy oil sitting in there or i don't want a big pool of oil sitting in there so i'll clean that out and i'll put the magnet back in all right now right here if there's any lint in here you want to be very careful again not to move this uh if it moves a little bit, okay. If it moves a little bit, you're not going to hurt it. Here's the deal. If this moves way up, out of place, if this moves up and come and disengages with this wheel, all right. You've got the you you will you will have the the uh, feed dogs out of time with the rest of the machine. And so then you have to retime it, and that can be a pain in the butt sometimes, okay? So that's the deal. You want to be very careful with that, okay? So don't, see, it can move, and it's not going to hurt it. Um, you just do not, make sure that it does not go too far up or too far down and disengage that wheel. But you want to put a little bit of grease in there. Okay, so you see that small arm going up and down right there? You want a little bit of grease in there, okay? And when I say a little bit, I mean just a little bit. It doesn't take much. You don't have to pack it full or anything. Just get, you wanna get it in there. If it doesn't go all the way in, then you can get a little bit more, okay? Just wanna make sure that it gets in there so that it's gonna keep that, that piece lubricated that's going up and down. You don't want a ton of grease in here. The more grease you have, the more lint it will attract. Understand that. Okay, just enough to get in there so that when that goes up and down, you'll keep it lubricated. Okay, and you see it kind of sticking out, poking out right there. I'm going to uh, clean that up a little bit. I'm just gonna take this and just like that, and clean the extra grease up, okay? Because you don't want any 
you don't want any lint being pulled to this, all right? Now, the next place is the gears, all right? Here are your gears. If there's lint in these gears, get it out. A lot of times, if there's a lot of lint, because you have, you have, uh, right here is a metal gear that this little plastic gear engages with, and it's got a housing that goes around. It'll get lint that's stuck in there. I will douse this in oil and turn it and turn it and turn it and douse it in oil and turn it and turn it and turn it. And the reason I do that is because it will push lint that's stuck in there out. You want the lint out. This one doesn't have that. Once that's done, then you'll take a little bit of grease and again, just a little bit, and you're just going to put it on that gear like this. Okay. And turn it. and get that greased all the way around, okay? You don't want an extreme amount of grease on it. I hope you can see this, okay? You just wanna make sure that it's greased all the way around, okay? And once you get that, it doesn't, just a little bit. Now, the other thing let me see if I can get it up here. Right here, right next to that gear is a lobe. Okay, that lobe moves your feed dogs up and down. Okay, this gear back here, this moves your feed dogs back and forth. This moves your feed dogs up and down. Okay, you want just a little bit of grease on that. It doesn't have to be an extreme amount again, and you don't want an extreme amount. Okay, just a little bit. So... We'll put a little bit of grease on that and then you're going to turn it just like that just a little bit more on it okay and that's probably going to be more than enough right there because that will move it around you can see the grease kind of sticking out to the side and we'll clean that up a little bit all right I don't want too much there because of the lint. Don't wipe all your grease off. You want just a little bit on there and that's it. Now you have another lobe right here. Okay. You're going to put a little bit of grease on that. Okay. It's underneath this metal. This one's even more important because you have metal on plastic. All right. Metal metal will destroy plastic very very quickly very quickly if it's not lubricated especially when you get lint involved so you're just going to put a little bit on there okay and get it in there doesn't need to be an extreme amount just needs to be lubricated Okay, and then if you have excess grease, you can pull that off. <laughs> Just take a rag and clean the excess grease off. You don't want to take all the grease off this, just the excess, because you don't need an extreme amount of grease on that. All right. Okay, and so at that point, that's done. You're done servicing this. Uh, you've cleaned it, you've lubricated it, you've oiled it. Now you just put it back together, okay? So you're gonna take, oh, well, I do wanna state if, uh, if you have lint in your machine, if you've used it, there's lint in there, you're gonna have a lint build up here. Get this out, clean, clean this out. Uh, sometimes you'll have it in here, clean all that, clean it all out here, okay? You can use a rag, you can use air or whatever, okay? Uh, you want it out. If the lint touches this, it's not going to hurt it, it's not plugged in, but you don't want it to stay there. You want it out, so get all the lint out of here, okay? Because you don't want it going back, you don't want it going back into your machine. 
So clean this side out, make sure that it's all cleaned up and looks good, all right? And then you're gonna put it back together. You're gonna put that, you're gonna sit this up there, you're gonna get these, you're gonna plug these in, and then you're going to run them down through the channels, all right? If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm gonna get this put back together and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've got them both hooked back up. You can't get them crossed, all right, because they only each fit in their own spot. And I've got them up underneath here, around here, and then through this, this one here. And then when I lay it, when I put it back together, it will lay in this channel right here down below. And this one, it'll lay in there, all right? I'll kind of help it to make sure that it does, but it will. Okay, so once it's plugged back in, you're just gonna push it back together. And as you see here, it should just fall back together. If it's not falling back together like that, uh, you've got a problem. It's not like a lot of the machines where you have lots of little plastic tabs that are are Holding it together and stuff. Okay, this one has so many screws in the back where it's necessary that it holds itself together. So again It's just gonna fall back together um, Normally, I will go ahead and plug this in and turn it on and Test it and stuff just a little bit at least I may not run it because sometimes you have problems with these if they're not screwed together uh, because the plastic warps a little bit. Uh, it's warped a little bit, um, but I'll turn it on and make sure everything looks good and looks like it's gonna run. Maybe I may run it on slow uh, just to make sure that everything's gonna work before I put the screws in it. So in case I screwed something up in there, I can go back in and check it out. Okay, so when screwing it back together, I'll normally start with these three center screws, I'll get them put in because that's gonna actually hold the machine together, top and bottom. Then I'll go to the bottom, then I'll do the top. Then I'll turn around, put the screw in here, then put this on. Then I'll go and uh, put the bottom on as well. All right, this is actually the screwdriver that uh, comes with Brother Machines, all right, for the needle plate, for removing the needle plate. And as you can see here, it is it fits the screws very well. There's a couple other variations of it as well. Um, it should it you should have one. I say you should have one. It would have come with the machine new in the packet. Um, you can check with your stuff and see if you've got it. If you're not sure, if you don't have one, you can check the link up above on the right. Um, I'll have one in there so that you can get it if you need it. Um, if you have problems with the link up above in the right corner, then I'll put a link down in the description description below as well, all right? When you're cleaning and servicing your machine, uh, you want to inspect your machine. You want to inspect a couple of parts. So you're going to inspect your needle plate uh, for damage. See if the uh, needle has hit it. Anything, any damage inside this little hole here, you want to clean it up. Okay, uh, you want to get all this cleaned up real good because a thread can get caught in there and cause you all kinds of problems. Um, if, if it's damaged on top, you want to at least take some sandpaper and rub it down so it's not sharp and sticking up. Otherwise, it can catch your fabric. Uh, down inside there, like I said, that can catch your thread and it will cause looping, uh, thread breakage, and everything else. Lots of problems. Um, your bobbin case. You want to inspect your bobbin case both the top all the way around it and the bottom down around here um, in this area because the, the thread goes all the way around this. It starts here and it comes around here. And as it does that, it comes around this outside edge right here. Okay, it comes around this outside edge right here and all through here and through here. And if there are small grooves, indentations, damage, anything, anything that that thread can get caught on, okay, it will, and it'll cause you problems, and it will cause you to uh, cause your thread to loop and everything else. So either use uh, sandpaper and clean this up, or um, get you a new uh, get a new uh, bobbin case. It's not a bad idea to have a bobbin case for this machine. 
on hand so that um, if it gets damaged, you can replace it quickly and easily. Um, I'll put a link in, I'll put in the link up above and down below, I'll have a bobbin case to it so you can get it and it will be specifically for this machine. Um, I will also, usually these bobbin cases fit several other machines, so I'll put the other machines that it fits on there, all right? Um, make sure that you inspect the stuff, make sure it's in good condition or you will have problems. Okay, when replacing your bobbin case, okay, regardless of whether the plate's there or not, bobbin case goes, bobbin case goes this way. There's a little, little uh, hump right here uh, that's going to go up against a small spring, and then this goes in the back. Okay, uh, don't don't pull this felt off. If there's a bunch of lint and stuff in it, then scrape the lint out very carefully uh, with a screwdriver or something else. Um, you can do it kind of just right over the top, just like that. You know, don't get under it. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. Just real carefully get that off there. But you want to keep this on here because this catches lint and helps to keep from uh, causing your machine problems. All right. So you will sit this in there just like that underneath your feed dogs. You're going to make sure that it sits properly in the hook. Just like that. See that little spring right there? Take notice of how that spring sits. Okay. And it'll push and it'll let go. If that spring is uh, out of whack and it's pushed all the way up, then just take a screwdriver and bend it just a little bit. Don't get crazy with it. You see, it's not out very much. That right there is all you want. All right. You'll sit it like that. Then you'll put your needle plate on. <clears throat> now for putting the needle plate on, needle plate goes exactly like this. Make sure that you're, make sure that your needle's all the way up. Make sure that your uh, presser foot is up, okay? You're gonna take this, you're gonna hold it at an angle like this, you're gonna come in, and that little tab is gonna go right there. And you're gonna drop this down so that it fits on the feed dodge, just like that. And then that lines up real well with those screws, okay? Real simple, then you're gonna put your screws in. Okay, so you're going to ensure that the bobbin case is in place. You see how it moves just a little bit, not much, okay? It should move just like that. It shouldn't be, make sure that when, when you put this needle plate back on, this needs to, you need to make sure this was in place. There's some pieces under here that sit down and hold this. And if this is out of place, it will sit down right on top of that and it'll actually scar and mar it and then you have to repair it, okay? So it should sit down there just like that and get that kind of movement. Now, if you put a little pressure, you see that the spring moves, okay? So that right there is what you want. Then you're gonna put your uh, plastic needle plate on. And so it'll go on. It should, uh, you're gonna put your plastic needle plate on. And so you kind of see how this is made on the bottom. And you're going to just kind of drop it in there, drop this down, and so it's not sitting exactly level, and then you're just going to push it, just like that, okay? And then it's on there. Now for your bobbin. Okay, so holding your bobbin with a thread to you and to the right, you'll drop it in. I take with my left hand, I take the thread with my right hand. I put my finger on that bobbin case and I just follow that little pattern there. It's got a little finger sticking out. Pull it around, up, around, into the knife, cut it. Okay, and then you can put this little plate right here on, just like that, and you're done. Ready to go. Put your needle back in and your uh, uh, foot back on and your machine is ready to go. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to see a short tutorial on how to use this machine, 
then you can check the link up on the right hand side and I'll have a link to that video up there um, as well. If you have a problem with the link up above, I'll have another link in the description. Y'all have a great day.